One of the biggest frustrations working with LLMs is having to re-explain yourself over and over again. They just don't remember your projects and your conversations from day to day. Today, we're gonna to solve that. I'm gonna show you how to give your AI tools persistent, permanent memory. In the last video, we built this AI rig and we got the base tools installed, including Gemini CLI. And in this video, we're gonna install open code, get it working with local models, and then connect both Gemini and open code to that permanent memory. Along the way, I'll also show you how to tackle the context window problem with local models and running an open code. And then also talk about having a dual GPU set up using your integrated GPU and your dedicated model GPU. By the end of this, you'll see how I use these tools with a persistent memory working with Gemini to help me with my projects and my video content. And I'll show you a really cool visualization of what the memory looks like. So let's get into it. Okay, we're back here in Omachi. And in the last video, we installed Gemini, which is the command line tool to utilize the cloud Gemini model, which is a super powerful model. Right now, this utilizes Gemini 2.5 Pro. I believe it's gonna utilize uh, Gemini 3 Pro shortly here. So this is a cloud model. There's a free tier that is very generous. I've been using this quite a bit. Uh, very powerful, very handy and free, which is great. But in this video, we're going to install the open code command line tool. So down here in AI, open code at the bottom. Open code is a, we'll put in a password. It's a command line development tool as well, but you can either use cloud models or your own local models. And so we're gonna set it up to connect with our Olama server. So it's already installed. We can open up another command window and open up open code. Look at that, doesn't look cool. We can also change the theme to match our operating system. Uh, right now I'm running Tokyo Night, so that looks cool, all matching now. So on this open code, you switch between build agent, plan agent, you can see in the bottom right, I'm switching between build agent and plan agent, and you can create your own agents as well, but we won't get into that. And this allows you to, to talk about the code, to plan with AI agent, but not actually have it do any editing on the file system, which is great for uh, security and protecting. So you would plan with the plan agent, and then switch it over to the build, a build agent and allow it to go make changes to the code or the, the files. So pretty cool. So let's uh, look at the models we have available. And we have two cloud models right now. There's Grok Code Fast One and Big Pickle. I don't know what Big Pickle is. I've been using the Grok Code Fast One model. It's pretty good. It's fast, as it says. It's free right now. I'm not sure how long that's going to last. But what we want to do is add in our Olama local models into this list. So we'll do that. We'll open up a new command window here. And we're going to edit a file that is located in your home folder under config, open code, open code.json. If it doesn't exist, just create it, open it up. This is what it looks like. I'm going to paste the code in here and it's provider. It's adding a new provider for models. It's using Olama. Uh, we've named it Olama local. This is the, the address to our server. If you need to change it from localhost to something else, do that. And then list out the, the models that you want to utilize. And so you can look at what models you have on your system by doing Olama list. I have quite a few on here, as you can see. But for this config, I'm utilizing 8B and 14B. So let's save that and restart open code. Now, when we go to models, we can see we have the Quen 38B, the Quen 314B models that are running through Olama local. So let's select 8B, switch to plan mode, and we'll, we'll start up a system monitor here, B top, whoops. And then we'll just say hi. 
and make sure it's running. Yeah, you can see it loading up the GPU now. It's loaded into VRAM and now it's working. Okay, now what I want to do is open up open code within a project folder. So I have one ready here, a Llama web search, and then we'll open up open code. And we're already on our Quen 3 8B model. Switch to plan again, and we're gonna ask it, what is this code doing? And you can be specific by passing through a file using the at symbol and selecting it. And now it's thinking, okay, the user wants me to do something, but I'm in plan mode. I can't do anything. It's strictly prohibited. I'm in plan mode. And you keep doing that and it'll keep giving you the same answer. Now this took me a bit to figure out. And the reason is we don't have enough context. Open code sends it a a bunch of context to set it up, the system prompt. We're also passing it the, uh, the Python code to inspect and the 4,000 tokens, just not enough. So it doesn't know what it's doing. So what we're going to do is make a copy of that 8B Quen3 model, but give it a bigger context window. So to do that, we can run that model in Olama, and then set the parameter for the, the context window. And we're going to go from 4,000 to 16,000 and you use these 1,024 increments. So paste that in there. And now the parameter is set and we're going to save that to a new model called Quen3. 8B 16K and then say bye to close it. And then in our config, we're going to update this to instead of 8B, we'll say this is the 8B 16K. And the 8B 16K, we'll name it the same. We'll save and quit. And then we will open open code again and see that we have the, the 16K version of the 8B Quen3 model. And we'll ask it again, what does this code do? And so it's loaded into VRAM. It's running off the GPU. We can check Olama PS to show that it's using 100% GPU. It's not offloading anything to the CPU. And now it's actually inspecting the code. It's using the Llama library and it's doing a tool call for web searches. That's exactly what that does. It's just a, uh, a simple script. That's all it is right there. So it looked at that. It knows what it does. Pretty cool. Now what I want to do is try to use the 14 billion parameter model and I need to increase the context size of that one as well. So I'll do that right now. Okay, let's open up open code again. And if we go to our models, we'll see now we got 14B 16K. So let's select that and ask the same question in plan mode. What does this code do? Okay, it's loaded up into VRAM. You can see we're maxing out this thing now, 12 gig out of 12 gig. So if we went any more over this context window with this model, we'd start offloading onto the CPU, which would have a big impact on the speed. And it's already quite slow with this 14 billion parameter model. So to get the most out of this 3060 or any graphics card you're using, I highly recommend that you run in a dual GPU mode where you have GPU one here, as you can see, is our integrated graphics processor within the CPU and it's running all the Windows management, all the GUI for the operating system. It's taking that load and then we reserve our RTX card, GPU zero, just for running the Llama models. And that's going to allow you to get the most out of whatever VRAM you have. And so let's see what it said. Yeah, it uses a Quen3B model, 
there's a hard-coded question in there, who won the World Series? That just ended. Um, and then it uses web search to find out the answer. That's exactly what it does. So good, now we have uh, open code that we can use local models on. We have Gemini, we can use cloud models on, and we can do the best of both worlds. So you can see we've already used 11,000 tokens on this question about this basic code. On the cloud model, we can go up to like a million tokens. So we can do way more powerful things with the cloud model. But now we have the best of both worlds. So now we can connect up Gemini and OpenCode both to our memory system, the persistent memory system. So let's look at that next. All right, so the memory implementation that I'm using is called Memento by I Achilles on GitHub. It uses SQLite for the database. So you'll need to make sure that SQLite is installed, which it should be on uh, Omachi. We have version 3.51, uh, so we're good to go. And you can set this up so that it automatically starts every time you launch your app, say Claude or Gemini CLI in our case, or open code. So we could put this in the configuration and it would launch every time. However, I want multiple applications to access this at the same time. So I'm gonna set it up as its own standalone server that these different apps can connect to, including Home Assistant. But in order to do that, your MCP servers, and if you don't know what MCP stands for, it's Model Context Protocol, and it's a standardized uh, way for applications to give context to LLMs. So it gives uh, tools for LLMs to use, basically. It's like an API for, for AI. And there's different protocols within MCP. There's this STDIO and SSE. Home Assistant uses SSE. And so you need to use an MCP proxy, which goes in between, which is this here on GitHub, uh, MCP proxy. And the way this works is it sits in between the MCP server, so our memory, and it converts the STDIO protocol into SSE protocol. So we'll need to install MCP proxy as well. And you can do that using UV tool install MC proxy. So you just type that in here. It's already installed for me. Okay. And then what we're going to do is set up a database. So we'll go SQLite 3, we'll open up a blank database. We'll save it as memory demo dot db and then we can quit that and see that our memory demo db is saved right here so that's what um, our mcp server memento is going to use to store everything okay so now we're going to run the server and i was just about to release this video and realize that i did something wrong and had to re-record this part so you have future quarry here for a minute then we'll go back to present query. So what I was doing is exporting this environment variable memory DB path right in here, and then running the command to run the server. But that actually wasn't passing that environment variable through to the MCP proxy uh, program. So the correct way to do it is to include the environment variable in the MCP proxy arguments. So we'll run MCP proxy, choose a port that you want to run it on. And this E argument or ENV you can use, you set the key and the value for your environment variable and it'll pass that through to MCP proxy and into the Memento server. So memory DB path, here's our path to CoreWorks demos, memory demo, and then we run MPX and the Memento server. So let's run that. And now the server is up and running and we can connect to it with our AI tools. Back to present query. So to configure Gemini and open code to connect to that MCP server to our memory, we have to edit two config files, open code config file here and the Gemini config file here. 
And we include within these, this section of code here, MCP server, we're gonna call it memory, run a command, MCP proxy. So this is actually converting it back into STDIO from SSE server. And we do the same over here, it just looks a bit different. MCP, we call it memory again. It's a local and it runs this command and it is enabled. So now when we run Gemini or open code, we can see that we're connected to our MCP server, one on each. So they're both connected at the same time. And then in Gemini, we can look at MCP list and see all the tools that are now available to Gemini. And so every time I launch into Gemini, I say something like ready. And I have it in the prompt to read the graph. And that's one of the commands. And so that'll read the entire memory structure. And then I can ask it questions. I can say something like, what video am I working on after 005, which is this current one you're watching? And it'll look at the memory and it'll try to answer my question. So it says, based on the graph, your next video in the sequence is 006. However, 014 is marked uh, with priority release as well. That's correct. I'm working on two. I'm working on this one about connecting home assistant to our AI agent. And I'm also working on one that is the overall blueprint of Cal, which will likely be my next video. So that's pretty awesome. Now Gemini knows what I'm working on. It knows the details. It can connect into the folder structure, look at the scripts and everything and, and help me out with my video projects. Now I cheated a bit and connected to my, my database um, that I made before that I actively use and not using the demo one so I could actually show you how this works. And one more thing I wanna show you is what this looks like visually because the LLM sees this all as a big JSON structure um, within the database, but sometimes you wanna look at it visually and make sure it's making the right connections. So I'm gonna show you that. So this is an Obsidian and I had Gemini produce this actually. It produced all the files and the connections based off the, the memory database. It copied it into Obsidian and created this visual. So you can see my, my project Cal and how it's connected to everything. CoreWorks Lab, and me, and the different series that I'm working on and the videos and how everything's interconnected. It's pretty wild. I think this is really cool actually. So this is what the LLM is seeing when you're running commands in Gemini, it's seeing all the connections and seeing how everything is interrelated. Okay, that's it for this video. We set up Gemini with MCP. We set up open code with the local LLM. We got persistent memory for both of these tools. This machine is now ready to start development. And like the memory graph showed in Gemini pullout, I am working on a video to show the overall uh, architecture of the AI home assistant I'm working on and that's going to be the next video so hope to see you there.